Wow, these are crazy times, people. So if you're listening to this much later, right now I am releasing this episode amidst the coronavirus outbreak, COVID-19. And let's not forget, so this could either be current or nostalgic for people whenever you guys are listening, but there's a lot happening. There's a lot of energy purging right now, and the timing is just really crazy for me in my personal life and my journey. So this is what is happening right now. It was at the shift in Mercury retrograde. That's in the last episode that I was talking about. This whole event happening worldwide was preceded by me stepping into spirituality in the middle of Mercury retrograde. So the timing is very uncanny. That's What I talk about in the last episode, just how I dealt with Mercury retrograde, what was going on internally for me during that upheaval, the discomfort, the disruption, accepting that I needed to do something about it. So I talk about that in the last episode, as well as explaining what Mercury retrograde is defined as, because this is all new for me as well. The energy shifts that happened for me during that time period from mid-February to early March. I discuss how I stepped into my power as well, getting into energetic healing through crystal work and also hiring my new coach, Shay Boland, who I will be talking about in future episodes, the work that him and I are doing for my transformation. It's a lot, a lot of things happening for me as well as all of you, I'm sure. So How are all of you guys doing? How are you holding up during this crisis? It's not a crisis. It's a purging. How are you doing during the purging? I think that there's a lot of negative energy that we've been holding on to that is being brought up to the surface. So whatever we carry and have been stuffing down deep within us is now coming out. So it's really a truth telling period in our lives. We are living our truth more so than we ever have, and it's not by choice. So it's an interesting perspective. I just want to thank all of you for your support over the last nine months doing the show. You know, I want to connect more. If you would like to reach out to me, you can contact me on Instagram. It is at you, yourself, and why on Instagram or my personal page at Steve Y Gardner. Reach out, follow what we're doing, send me a DM, get in touch. I want to build a community. We also have a Facebook group. It's a private group for everyone's protection. It's a really solid collection of people that are working on themselves on a daily basis and we're here to support one another. So that is you, yourself, and why on Facebook. Just request to join and would love to have you. If you feel called to, I would love a review on Apple Podcasts because that helps get this message out. And we need this message now more than ever that healing is underway and that we are in this together. We are here to support one another. And that's what I'm trying to do through this show. So a review on Apple Podcasts helps that effort. I would absolutely love it. And if you like this episode, please share it with a friend who needs to hear this. This is such a, an amazing conversation that I have with my guest. And it's such an indication of where I'm headed and where the show is headed because I didn't plan any of this. All of this is happening organically. The show started last summer and what it was then is still what it is now, but it's becoming more. And I just feel really excited to be on this journey and excited that you're on this journey with me. So without further ado, here is today's episode. And I just want you all to know that I love you and stay calm and peaceful amidst the disruption. And this is all happening for us. So today's guest has got quite a story or a multitude of stories, I should say, 
from growing up homeless to serving in overseas combat, battling resulting depression, anxiety, and PTSD, and discovering plant-based medicinal healing while in the throes of addiction to Adderall and sleeping pills. Today's guest has had quite the journey and continues it now and moving forward in the way of healing others. He is a professional bodybuilder, energy reader, and spiritual coach. Please welcome Nahum Vazakis. Wow, thank you very much. You make it sound so glorious. <laughs> and you know, um, I, I think, you know, of course, that, 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 that's just a short synopsis, but I think it's important to realize that, you know, a lot more people go through things like this than we might realize. Just, it's, it's scary to bring this stuff out of ju- because fear of judgment, fear of being, you know, ridiculed, fear of being, you know, like held down in this society. But when you make it to the other side, and you're able to see and, and share the learned lessons from the experiences, it really sheds a whole new light. And a lot of people resonate with it. So, you know, for all you guys that are out there that have gone or are going through similar experiences and situations to what I'm going to share here today, just remember that, you know, we all have a choice and we all have the ability to work through and get to the other side of that because everything that you're going through is there to teach you something. That's the biggest thing that I've learned through going all the you know, challenges in my life. And also too, if you think about it, many people out there that have made it to great heights, have done something very special in their lives, have gone through some kind of challenge to this degree, right? You look at Eminem, you look at 50 Cent, you look at Tony Robbins. I mean, all these people have battled some kind of like literal life and death scenario and come through to the other side. It's when you get to the point where it's either like you're going to win or die trying. You know, it becomes black and white. That gray area just sort of dissolves because it just, it can't be sustained like that forever. Yeah, no. And I love how variegated your story is. I mean, I feel like anyone listening will ultimately find something to relate to given all the things that you've been through. I figured we could start off uh, chronologically with the childhood. Sure. Uh, so in, in our call beforehand, you mentioned that you grew up in Massachusetts. Yes, I did. Just south, southeast of Boston. Okay. Me as well, although I don't think the situations were exactly the same. Can you describe your childhood growing up? My family lived in a little suburb, Bellingham, Massachusetts. And I bounced around a little bit. But when I was about 11 years old is when, you know, things got real tumultuous. And in retrospect, you know, I'm sure that was right around the time I was hitting puberty and that things were starting to sort of go a little nuts. But I got to this point where I just, I didn't want to go home. I felt, I felt like I didn't belong in my family, if that makes sense. Right. So I felt like the black sheep and I was always being picked on, you know, bullied in school and picked on when I got home. And I got to this point where I was just like, you know, what? I'd rather just not be home and, and live like in the streets than, you know, than be at home sleeping in a bed. And you know, the weather up there in Massachusetts, it gets cold in the winter. And half the time I was, you know, on the streets during the winter time. And so I'd like run away. I got picked up, get picked up by the cops. And then I'd, you know, come home and then I'd run away again and rinse and repeat for like two years. So finally it got to the point where I just refused to go home. And the cops were like, okay, well, you know, you're going to have to go into foster care if that's the case. It's like, okay, let's go. How did your parents react to this? They, they didn't. They were just like, if he doesn't want to live under our rules, then he can go live somewhere else. I was a pretty starving kid. I made my decisions and I, uh, I went to foster care when I was 13. Wow. And what was that like going in? Did that kind of, did you feel like you belonged when you entered into that space? No, no, I never, I never felt like I belonged, but I was always searching outside of myself for something to belong to. And of course, you know, whenever you're searching outside of yourself, you're always going to come up short. Right. But I was just a lost kid. And I just, I didn't, I didn't want to be me for some reason. And I didn't understand what was going on. I was a teenager. You know, I just, I felt, I felt like I was a piece of trash thrown away at the time. So I went to this new school and literally I, um, I got expelled in like two months, but I had applied for a vocational school after that. And I ended up in ninth grade. I went to that vocational school and I did a little bit better there. But, you know, ultimately, 
when I was a teenager, I was just an escapist. I didn't know how to make friends. I was just incredibly dysfunctional. So I needed some type of structure. And I ended up finding that when I got a little bit older and went in the military when I was 20 years old. For me, getting into this space of spirituality, you kind of feel like a lost sheep in a way. There's, I feel like there's not a lot of people, the majority don't understand it. I'm going through this right now where I feel like a little bit out of body, out of place. Do you uh, think any of the the work that you do, it's kind of like, oh, it makes sense that I felt like I didn't belong back then because I, maybe I didn't, you know, the, the, the majority of the world is unconscious, asleep. Maybe that was a precursor. Yeah, well, you know, that's actually what really got me into astrology. I looked into Christianity and Catholicism, and Buddhism, and pretty much every religion that I could think of to, to explore. And none of it really fully resonated with me. It felt like it was all missing something. And then when I started studying astrology, I started to understand myself because the, the celestial bodies are essentially archetypes of our consciousness, right? So I always felt like the black sheep, like I didn't belong. Essentially, this day and age, they, they call that uh, indigo children. Indigo children are the ones that came here that were meant to change the course of the ancestral lineage. So say like, you know, every family, they have their patterns, right? Like, oh, like my grandmother got cancer, my mother got cancer, so I'm going to get cancer, right? Or my grandmother, you know, married uh, an abusive alcoholic, my mother married an abusive alcoholic, so I'm going to marry it. Like all these things that are passed down from generation to generation, in this generation right now, especially as you're seeing a lot of people are waking up because we are living in a time where humanity needs to change. There is no more threshold for holding on to these ancestral behavior patterns. So it's either you grow up and you change the pattern or you grow up and you repeat the pattern. So I see myself as the catalyst in my lineage to change the pattern of belief systems and letting go of all these really self-sabotaging, self-limiting actions and processes that happened in my family. And before you really understand this, you just feel like you got dealt a shitty hand, right? Like life, like why is all this happening to me? God hates me. What the hell is going on? And you just want to, you, you just want to change, but you don't know how. But these celestial events that happen throughout our life, it's, Everything is in divine timing. And sometimes, you know, that's can almost sound like a cop out. But essentially, when your soul is not your ego, when your soul is ready to grow and evolve, that's when it happens automatically. And there's a massive, massive amount of people experiencing this shift right now because the universe is saying, hey, like we need to wake up, we need to change what's going on. And as you can see, there is mass, like, you know, in order to change the different layers of the systems in the world, like within, as within, so without, right? So these structures that have been in place, the structures of our emotional levels in our consciousness, they're all being brought up from underneath the surface to be exposed. And it has to crumble before it can become reborn, right? So there's like a rebirthing process. Look at the movie, um, The Matrix, it's a perfect example, Right. That's, there's a rebirthing process going on right now in consciousness. And it's very similar to that waking up, all of a sudden you're in this ship, you all these people, the whole world you were living in was a fucking illusion. You're like, oh my God, like, I, I, I don't want to handle this. But essentially then you realize that, wow, okay, I'm in a new world. There are new rules. There are, this is a new game. So I create my own reality. So I'm able to shift things in a different way. But you have to, you know, crawl before you can walk, walk before you can run. So, you know, I was a bit of a late bloomer and I needed to go through a lot of processes before I really figured out how all this stuff works. But now that I finally figured it out, I'm able to help many others going through this process at whatever age. And I definitely do want to get into that. I just wanted to go back a bit and ask, can you maybe talk about some of the unconscious patterns in your lineage that you were looking to break? Was there patterns of abuse in your family or... Definitely, uh, I'd say um, abandonment, um, rejection, fear, fear of success, fear of failure as well, fear of responsibility. I, I will. I think at least on my on my father's side, there was a, there was a lot, pretty much a little bit of everything. It was a smorgasbord of just like 
failure, really. And my, my father actually died when he was, um, when, when he was 62 years old, very young, alone, broke, and it, just massive amounts of health issues going on. So, you know, like, and through the years, like I'm a natural athlete, right? So through the years, like I paid very close attention to my health and my wellness. And, you know, like I have some of those, I've, I've had some of those negative behavior patterns that I started to see probably in like my mid twenties, mid to late twenties. And then, you know, when I, I actually just met my real father when I was 28, I didn't even know him until then. So I had a lot of questions. Like I found out that I was adopted when I was 16. So what the hell is going on? Why did this happen? And I didn't understand. I felt, betra- I felt betrayed. I felt like, how can the people that are biologically predisposed to love you just throw you out like that? So it created these abandonment issues and these, and these rejection issues. Like, well, if I'm not worthy of my own parents being there for me, then how can I be worthy of love? How can I be worthy of success, of money, of all these things? And I've had to dig very, very deep you know, to really uncover the answers and understand so that I could face them and grow through them and process them and change my life. Yeah. I mean, I'm adopted also. I, I knew, I knew all along, but I actually did some trauma work last year. I went back to South Korea and visited the orphanage where I lived in. I visited the alleyway that I was found in. That was a couple episodes way back. So I can relate to the feelings of I'm not worthy the inherent human beings that were supposed to love me from the moment I was conceived, I, they left me. Right. So there's this whole complex in your mind where you feel like you are not worthy of love. Right. Uh, um, so you found out when you were 16 that the parents that you were running away from were not actually your biological parents. Well, it was, it was, it was my stepfather. My, my, my mother was, you know, still there and still around. But um, it was basically my mother and my real father didn't get along, right? So my mother thought it was in uh, everybody's best interest if he took off. And she offered him to sign the papers and he was like, okay, right? So he just kind of went along with it. it you know, it, 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 it took me a very long time to not be angry about that. It was a difficult process to go through. But now that I'm older, now that I see it from a different angle, I understand it. And it's so interesting that when I meet people, I'm able to connect with everyone on a very deep level. And I think that we all have a part, like especially Indigo children in particular, I believe you're one too. Mm, um, We all have to go through some type or some level of experience like that so that we can grow through it, have that rebirth experience so we can help others. Because really at the end of the day, our job in this world or, or our purpose is to help humanity in our own way to change just one person, one thing at a time. Mm, mm. Yeah, right? that's so good. And yeah, so that's true. Why you're, that's why you're doing this, doing this mm-hmm. podcast, right? To help the information get out there. Yep, absolutely. So you went into the military, Wh- which branch of the military? Army. Okay. Army. Thank you for your service, first of all. Well, thank you. And I just wanted to know, did you know right from the get-go that this was meant for you? You were, you were looking to serve? You know, I actually didn't know anything about the military. Um, <laughs> and when I, when I made the decision, honestly, it was two months after 9-11. So all that happened. And I was working a job that I hated. And then I talked to a friend of mine that joined. He was like, dude, I just got like a $10,000 sign-on bonus. And at that time, I was like, 10 grand? Sign me up, dude. <laughs> So I went to the recruiter and, and, and what they don't tell you is that they give you 10 grand split in the three payments over the period of six years and it's taxed 33 and a third percent. So you actually get about like maybe $900 in three different payments over a six year period. So of course it's the marketing. I didn't know that, but I will say that, you know, it did give me a significant amount of structure that I really needed. It helped discipline me quite a bit. And I got in the best shape of my life at that time too. So you know, I, I, I definitely am grateful that I had the experience, but you know, I was in for 10 years. I started off in the infantry and then, um, I tried out for EOD and I, I, I made it through EOD. What's the EOD? Explosive origins disposal. So it's, it's, it's the bomb squad for the military. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I got to a point where I made it uh, my, my purpose to face my fears. Like everything I did, like I was afraid of heights. So I jumped out of airplanes. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I'm afraid of bombs. So I'm going <laughs> to. Yeah. You know, why not? That's you. I mean, you can't get much crazier than that. 
No, um, you cannot. That's and it definitely taught me a lot. Like I had, you know, uh, uh, my first big brush with death. That definitely puckered my butthole a little bit. Um, I, I, I responded in a very different way than I thought I would. And actually, I, I talk about this in my ebook that I just finished writing. So I'm going to have that ready pretty soon. You have to send me a link to that so I can put it in the show notes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when, when, I, when I went to do my very first mission and I, I went to defuse my first bomb, I froze. I was paralyzed. And I didn't think that that was going to happen to me. I was like, I want to be G.I. Joe, hardcore, go, you know, get medals, kill terrorists, all this. But when I started to really see how it works, how the process works, all the, it was just ethically and morally not aligned with who I started to realize that I was. And this, astrologically speaking, I was in Iraq during my Saturn return, which is sort of the first period in your life, which is like your midlife crisis, if you will. Right. Mm -hmm. Waking up to realizing that, oh, wow, like everything, the last 28 years of my life have been a lie. It's always like between the ages of what? Is it 29 and 30? 30. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's Saturn's return. Okay. I just want to explain that for the people who are listening. Yeah. So, so Saturn rules like the, the third dimensional world that we live in. It, it, it rules time and space. Right. So, and Saturn is sort of like that, you know, the father figure or like the drill sergeant that's in your head, you know, like you got to do this right. You got to make shit happen. And I'm a Capricorn. So it's my ruling planet, which means it's very strong in my chart. So when that came around, it was my reality check. So the last, you know, 28 years of my life, I was doing, doing a review and realizing like, wow, I've been making decisions based on my ego's desires. Like I I wanted to make it appear like I was a badass, right? I wanted people to think that I was hardcore and, you know, and I thought I was going to be a lifer in the military until, you know, what, when I was a kid, I was always like, I, now that, now that I'm older, I understand this. But when I was a kid, I didn't, that I was highly empathic, right? I felt everybody's emotions and energy, but I grew up in, you know, Italian family, like, you know, boys don't cry, shut up, be tough, make things happen. You just got to work hard and, you know, be the provider. Everything always felt so wrong to me about the way that life was lived. You know, like you get together with someone, you're 18 you create this life, white, white picket fence, the whole nine. And, uh, I, I just did not resonate with that. I felt like I need to explore and see life and, you know, have these experiences. So when I finally did it taught me a lot, but I had to go way off some deep ends to go figure that out. Right. Yeah. So you froze during the, I froze, man. Yeah. I, I, I think even a little pee came out. It was, it was, it was really intense. And that made me question everything about myself. That moment was a defining moment for the turning point in my life where I started to realize like, okay, this part of me that feels weak, that feels vulnerable, that just feels like a little wounded child, which essentially it is, is a part of me that I need, need to accept, not shove down. It broke down my identity so bad that I, they put me on pills and like antidepressants and like, like I, I lost my job. Things went like spiraled downhill very, very much so because all of a sudden, like, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I, I started to question everything about my, my existence, my identity. And it was interesting because there was a point where I was on 13 different medications at once. Okay. I felt like a shell of a man. And like, I just, I, I felt so crappy for so long. I finally just decided on my own. I'm just going to get off this shit fuck this. I don't feel good. I want to make a change and they're not helping me. So I, I'm the only one that can help myself. Right. That's when I decided to do my first bodybuilding competition. I was like, I just channeled all my focus into weightlifting because that's the one thing that I was good at. Right. And then I started winning shows. I was like, okay, wow. Maybe I found my new identity. Like I created a new identity, right? It felt great for a couple of years. And then I got out of the military and I I went to Arizona state to study psychology. I want to understand myself, my brain. And that led me on to a whole new path with, you know, still a lot of ups and downs, but finally I found something that made me feel whole. That made me feel like I had control of something myself, right? It made me have a purpose. But it got to a point where, you know, the, the first, I'd say five, six shows I did, I was, I was doing it be, from the place because I love it because I have passion for it, right? Then I got to the place like, okay, now I want to bring it to the next level. Now I want to become a pro. I'll do whatever it takes. And I started taking a little too far and I sort of lost my identity in that as well. So that, my last show was in 2013 and everything sort of went downhill. I was like, 
come on, man, like, give me a break. Like what, what's going to give now? But I've learned that, you know, every, every now and then, like we, we all go through phases. Like it, mine tends to be about every seven to, to eight years, right? Where you're in a place you're meant to evolve, but if you're not evolving, like your soul wants you to, then the universe is going to come in and bring you a tower moment. Is that's what I call it, which is basically okay. Everything's going to break down, similar to what we see going on in the world right now. Everything's breaking down. Everybody's freaking out because there needs to be change. Things are not working the way it is, right? So we grow and we learn. So that happened for me when I started going to massage school in two thousand, beginning of two thousand fourteen. So you're out of bodybuilding. Well. I'll, I'll always be a bodybuilder. It's always a part of me, but I attached my identity to bodybuilding. Like I was a bodybuilder. I had to release that attachment. Okay. And that was very difficult for me, mm. right? Because I, I just, I needed to have this pro status, but really if I went pro, then what next? I mean, eventually it, w- it would have fallen apart anyways. Right. So, I, so I, I would always get attached to these external factors with in regards to my growth, because I wanted this external validation. I wasn't looking within when I, I thought I was, but I had to learn. So I started going to massage school. And when I went there, like I had already been a, a personal trainer. I, like I knew the anatomy and physiology really, really well. But what I didn't know how to do is meditate, breathe, slow my mind down. So when I started doing that in massage school, after a few months, all this tension in my body that was all built up in this big coat of armor around me, it also started to melt away. And then I had what's called an SER, a somato emotional release. And that was when I started to really learn the next level of my consciousness. In our fascial system, which it's interesting to me that they don't teach fascia in college, because it's probably the most significant and important system in the human body. But we hold on to our emotions in our physical body by way of uh, neuropeptides, right? So say we have, a, an emo- we, we have a spark of emotion, which creates a, a particular thought. And that thought form goes through our body. You know, like if you see like someone that you think is really hot and you feel that flush go through you or like you lock eyes and like, whoa, right? Or you, or you have this like, you know, interview for like this big job and, and you're just like, you can feel it going through your body, your tummy's, you know, rumbling and you get done. They say yes. You're like, yeah. You get this huge dopamine hit. Yeah, okay? totally. Well, mm-hmm. that, those are all neuropeptide responses, right? So when we suppress who we really are, these neuropeptide um, responses get suppressed in, in, the, in the physical body. And usually there's an indication of this when you can't shut your mind off and like you start having sleep problems and you start having body aches and pains. Okay, these are signs that the pressure is building up underneath and you need to release it. So one of the best ways to release it is through meditation. So I started doing this meditation constantly every day in school and I had this massive release. It basically looked like I was having a seizure for about two hours. And this is in front of the whole school. It's crazy. When you have an SER, you do something that's called fascial unwinding, which is all this tensed up tissue just starts to shake open and, and, and move out and you release this energy. But mine, um, the, the teacher said that they had never seen one as extreme as mine. Um, so I was really good at holding shit down. Right. So I, I, so I had this experience and then after that experience, everything changed because I shifted my vibration so dramatically that now I didn't want to hang around the same people. I didn't want to eat the same foods. I didn't want to lift weights. I didn't even, I didn't even feel like I connected to my girlfriend at the time. So it just changed everything about my life and I felt lost again. So I started digging much more into this personal development stuff and, you know, looking into the subconscious mind and that right around that time is when I found ayahuasca. Now, I'd say that I probably learned more about myself in two, in two nights of ayahuasca than I did in my entire 34 years of existence before then. What is ayahuasca? Like, ayahuasca is, is a shamanic plant medicine that comes from Peru. It contains the, uh, the ingredient DMT. Are you familiar with DMT? So DMT is dimethyltryptamine. It's a, it's a naturally occurring chemical uh, in the brain. It's, it's, it's released in large quantities when we're born and when we die. You know how like when people have like near-death experiences and, uh, you know, they say they saw God and they saw white light and all of a sudden they come back and they have like this new gift or whatever. That's DMT. Wow. Okay. So I, I had this experience and it just, 
showed me all my trauma, all my stuff, past lives. Like I became one with the universe. It completely dissolved my ego. It's impossible to describe unless you've actually experienced it. I, I talk about this um, in my book as well too, but that is what really changed the game for me. That helped me really fully understand the deeper parts of my psyche and not just my psyche, but the collective psyche. And I started to feel like... I recognized this empathic nature that was deep within myself that, excuse me, that was actually my gift. And I've stuffed it down because it felt vulnerable. I was always afraid to face my vulnerability, right? I was just riddled with fear. And that fear had me paralyzed almost my entire life. So when I finally went inside and I felt all these things and I purged all these things, I mean, like I lost, I lost, <laughs> I lost 12 pounds in, in, in the first night. Just from in the first night, first night. So this is a, a a supplement that you take. Is that what it is? No, no. It's um, it's it's a brew that is made in a sh- shamanic ceremonial fashion. That you sit in a ceremony with a shaman, and they sing these songs called ikaros. These ikaros are like energetic songs that the vibration of them connects the plant medicine oh to the God. spirit of the plant. There's a spirit in this medicine. It's like a feminine like grandmother kind of a spirit and the spirit talks to you. It's literally like having a conversation with God. Wow. So, and it, it, it gives you exactly what you need, not necessarily what you think you, what you think you need. And, you know, you go through this, this, this process and it is just, it educates you on things that far surpass anything else you can possibly understand. I mean, um, Terrence McKenna, Dennis McKenna, um, uh, Alan Watts, like all these all these great thinkers of our time, they all, uh, it, uh, Joe Rogan talks about it all the time. A lot of great thinkers of our time have had these experiences and they talk about it and promote it. In fact, I know uh, there a, a lot of um, states right now are, are going through the process of, of, of legal, legalizing it because it has so many health benefits. They say that one night of ayahuasca is equivalent to 10 years of talk therapy. Is it like a surreal? Do you have like an acid trip kind of? Well, DMT is the most potent psychedelic in existence. So yes. Okay. Yes, it is. But it's, okay. it's, it's in a whole world in and of itself. It's like LSD or mushrooms or anything can't, can't touch it. It's, it's oh. really, it's impossible to, uh, to really fully comprehend. And actually, okay. Have you ever seen the movie Dr. Strange? Mm-mm. No. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, if any of you guys out there have seen the movie Doctor Strange, it's a Marvel movie. Now, now you have to watch it. Okay. okay now I am, and I have to watch the Matrix again. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So Doctor Strange, um, it, it, he was uh, he was a neurosurgeon that uh, he got a really bad car accident and destroyed his hand, so he couldn't work anymore. So he went to this metaphysical woman to learn how to get his hands back, and he discovers this metaphysical magical stuff, and it's actually very similar to what he learns in that movie is okay. sort of like an ayahuasca journey. So okay. watch that and you'll be tripped out and blown away. Okay. So is it scary? Is the experience, was it frightening when you first did it? Uh, yeah. Wow. I mean, it's, it's bringing up all your traumas right in front of your face. You, you definitely, you definitely have to be ready for it. You know, someone watching this right now, like while I'm talking about it, if they're getting the feeling, Oh my God, that's what I need. That's it. That's the answer. That's how you know that you're called to it. And then you'll research it. Like, when I first found out about it, one of my one of my clients told me about it and I didn't know what it was. And then all of a sudden, like I looked it up on YouTube and watched a few documentaries and then I just studied it for like a week and I was like, okay, this is it. This is what I need to do. And I'm going to go for it. And I was terrified, but it's funny. Like when I first went into it, I, I was incredibly scared because I'd never really surrendered before. Right. And I knew that it was just going to take over. So that feeling of having to surrender when I didn't know what it felt like, it was ter- terrifying. And I thought, oh, shit, is this going to bring me to a bad trip? And am I going to have a bad time? And, but that's where ayahuasca is different because this, this medicine is more powerful than your ego. Mm-hmm. So th- I remember like, I, was, I was having like, an anxiety attack like, after I drank my first cup. And it took like 45 minutes for it to kick in. And once it did, I felt this warm, loving, peaceful feeling just wash over me. And I was just like, okay, I did not expect this at all. And then suddenly, like, I started to see these fractals, like the sacred geometry that looked like a a circus. 
And I all of a sudden felt like I was a puppet on a string dancing around like a little kid in a circus. <laughs> and I was seeing memories from like that look familiar from when I was a child, but I didn't remember it in my conscious mind. Oh my it was God. Like I was back home with my family and I was seeing like uh, almost like this place that I felt like home, but I had never seen before. I, I, I still to this day don't know if it was a past life or what, but what I felt, I felt this like connection to family, this connection to my, to myself, to my higher self, this connection to God. And, and, you know, God was basically saying, everything's okay. You are loved. You are taken care of. It's a first, it was the first time I ever really felt love in my entire life. Oh. Like the vibration of love. Yeah. And, you know, when you feel something like that, you know, I, th- I think a lot of people, a lot of people are so dysfunctional because they've never experienced that feeling before. And when you're conditioned to be basically living a life of fear, which a lot of people live from a place of fear. That is, that is, it's like a virus that infests your lineage, like your children and, and, and the rest of your family. So when you finally have that experience of understanding and experiencing that, that vibration of love, it changes everything because love essentially is, it's the highest vibration in existence. And that's basically what, what God is. Now with love also comes like there's a polarity to everything. So with love, the, the, the polarity of the, that vibration is fear. And when you break it down, there are really black and white. There's love and there's fear. And everything branches off from those two. Fear has pain, insecurity, judgment, you know, all, all these things. Love has joy, happiness, peace, bliss, all those things. So it, from all, all my experiences in my entire life, from everything that I've, I've come to learn and I've known, it really gets broken down. You know, that, that gray area gets dissolved. And it's like, look, are you going to come from a place of love? Or are you going to come from a place of fear? And that's with every situation that you come into in a relationship, right? Like you have a really deep relationship and they're going to, if you're really into them, you really feel vulnerable with them. You have to embrace that vulnerability within yourself. Or are you going to get insecure? Are you going to be afraid? Are you going to think that they're trying to cheat on you or screw you over or whatnot? If you get this new job or new business and you're insecure about, can I do this? Can I actually make this happen? Do I have these quotas that I have to meet? Blah, blah, blah. You know, do I really believe in myself? Am I secure in my own, you know, responsibility? Can I take care of these things? And I think that every experience that we have in life we have these opportunities to learn or to step into our truth and our love or allow the fear to dictate everything that we have going on. And literally, we have this choice in everything that we do. And when you start to look at life from that angle, it changes the game. It's, it's a complete paradigm shift. And that's what I try to help people see because we all get in our own ways in different things, right? Some people, they struggle with relationships. Some people, they, they struggle with drugs and alcohol. Everybody that struggles with drug, drugs and alcohol is numbing something out because they don't want to feel emotions. They don't want to feel the pain. They can't handle the amount of fear that they have sitting in there. So they have to be honest with themselves and they have to do it one little piece at a time. And really, when you start to understand that, then you identify the triggers and identify the different ways. And when you break it down to that center, then you can really help anybody do anything because we're all human beings. We all have these five senses. We all have these typical, you know, emotions and energetic correspondences. So I can look at someone or look at their astrology chart and see where they're struggling and then help them identify, okay, this is how you get in your own way. This is where you need to work on. And this is how you can work on to navigate it. This is how you need to look at yourself like navigational tools in order to break through those processes. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. So the going back to the, is it called ayahuasca? Uh-huh. You only do that for like two nights? You, you can't just get a prescription and be like, hey, take this once a day. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, maybe like if you go down to South America, they, they, you can like microdose it and do a prescription type of thing. But, oh, wow. um, but it's meant to be like done in a ceremonial fashion. Okay. Um, I know that it all depends. Like, you know, some people go down, uh, you know, like go to become shamans and, um, go down to South America, do what people that I know call Jedi training and they go down there and they'll spend six months and they'll, but, but the, the ayahuasca isn't the really it's it that brings the stuff up, 
But the real thing comes down to the diet, comes down to the meditation, comes down to the discipline. Like they say, the real work starts after the ceremony. So ah, you go through a ceremony, you realize all this shit. Holy fuck. Now my, now my life has changed forever. Now, how do I reintegrate myself back into life? That's the real challenge because now you're going to come around people and judgment and, and all the, all the woes that life brings you. Right. And you had this massive, profound awareness, like, oh, my God, my life has changed. But how do you integrate that back into life and not get pulled or sucked back into it? So it's about keeping your body healthy as possible. You know, eating a mostly plant-based diet, keeping your body clean, staying away from sugar, staying away from things that alter your consciousness into a lower vibration, right? Getting around, if you're around toxic people, finding a way to get away from them or creating solid emotional boundaries and not letting people you know, like get into your energetic field, because I'll tell you what, man, with all the darkness and stuff that's in this world, you have to be very careful. And, and that's why a lot of people that have been through these processes, uh, they're creating these businesses and they're helping a lot of, there's a lot of people growing and growing that are helping people out to, you know, create a better life for others as well. But you have to do the work yourself. Like nobody can do it for you. But I think so, once you reach that, that, that place of being sick and tired of being sick and tired, mm -hmm. you know, you're really ready to step into that greatness. Cause I'll tell you what, dude, every single person out there has that greatness within them. Just all depends on if you're, if you're going to settle or if you really want to change your life. I'm a firm believer if everybody in the world, well, I wouldn't say everybody, but say at least 50% of the world did ayahuasca, we our, our world would be so much in su such a better place. Wow. So yeah. you talk about reintegration into the collective. What did that look like for you after the ceremonies? It was, it was difficult, man. It, it made me really realize a lot of things about myself, but I still had my bad habits. Now I was more aware of my bad habits and it took me a couple of cycles of falling back into my bad habits to pull myself out to, you know, to be able to get myself restructured. And I think, you know, for, for a lot of years, for a long time, I, I abused myself. I took drugs. I, I threw my body way in my mind, way out of balance because I, for a long time, I was afraid to face my shit. You know, like I still have a hard time with sleep. Like my brain doesn't always get into, you know, deep sleep mode. So I, so I'm really into like biohacking now, like doing natural things to help optimize my mind and my body. I'm a big fan of Dave Asprey. Uh, have you ever heard of Dave Asprey? Mm -hmm. Oh man. Okay. I'm a newbie. Don't judge me. <laughs> Superhuman, man. You've got to get that book. Superhuman. He, he created the Bulletproof Diet. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Oh, I did hear. I have heard of that. Okay. So yeah, Dave Asprey is a man. He's a pioneer. His, his, his goal is to live to 180. Wow. That's quite a and, goal. And I think he's going to do it, but not just, not just live like old and crusty. I mean, actually live <laughs> life, like being alive and wow. the stuff that he talks about in his books, like all these developments like in functional medicine and all these ways of like anti-aging techniques and things like that, they are getting so advanced. I mean, you can go down to Panama and, and get stem cells done and you can lengthen your telomeres to you. You can be 50 and recover at, at the cellular level. You're functioning from a 22 year old level. Wow. Um, look at uh, uh, Ben Greenfield. He's done it. Uh, he's, he's a former Navy SEAL. I actually, there was a Matt, um, there's a UFC fighter, Matt, Matt, I don't remember his last name, but he, um, he cracked a skull open, uh, during a fight and he actually, he got some kind of degenerative disease and it was eating away his bone marrow. He's getting broken bones all over the place. And he went down to Panama, got stem cells. And now he's literally back to almost hundred wow. percent. I mean, and you know, like, uh, these different techniques, like a uh, PRP, um, uh, you know, like NAD IV infusions, uh, uh, large dose vitamin C infusions, like autoimmune diseases, cancer, like these things are things, things that can be overcome naturally that are starting to be brought out to the world that many people don't realize anymore. I myself have helped a few people reverse cancer. So, and I'm not even a doctor. So I know if I can figure it out and I can do it, many other people can do it, but we live in a fear-based society and system. And right now that fear-based stuff is just at an all time peak because we've just come into this net new 30 year cycle where the Saturn Pluto conjunction just happened, which hadn't happened since 1517. And that's why all this stuff is happening. I'll tell you what, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better, but it needs to happen so that we can have a revolution. We're also coming up to um, the United States Pluto return. So remember back when the United States was founded, right? 
the Brits came over here to re, to establish a new colony, and then they were like, "Well, screw you guys. You guys are tyrannical, so we're going to break off." And then that and then that created you know uh, the war. Well, we're coming into another revolution, and it's going to be similar to when we originally came over. Because look at look look at our government now. It's doing the same thing that it did back in 1776 when we broke off. It's crazy. Holy shit! Wow, you're blowing my mind right now. Crazy. Um, so I just want to get back into the linear, the linear pathway of your story. And then I want to just rampage on all this stuff. And I want to yeah, ask you yeah, about coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you reintegrated back into, let's say, normal society and yep. then discovered astrology through this healing self-discovery process was that how it well uh so i started i started reading up and like researching astrology um right around the same time but it wasn't until uh i i got my heart crushed from this from this woman that i was with that i really started to dive deep into it because we were engaged and i was madly in love with this woman i, I don't like the word madly in love i was happily in love with this woman and um, <laughs> and but we, we didn't work and I wanted to understand why so that I could better myself, you know, like improve myself. What can I do to optimize myself, to bring myself back? And if we're meant to be, we'll be right. So I started really diving deep and like buying books. I, I, I did a few online courses and I studied it for a good, like five years. And it helped me really, really understand the nuances of energy and how to like navigate the energies of myself, of other people. And then it, it was just about a, a year ago, actually. It's Mar so yeah, 13 months ago where I met my now, my astrology mentor. Her name is Maruma too. She's a sun soul astrology and she created her own quantum astrology, her own, her own actual school of astrology, which combines quantum physics and astrology. Fascinating wow. stuff. But she sort of like helped teach me she was like, you need to get out there and do this. So because she kind of helped give me the confidence to push me out there, I started my YouTube channel and I started like, you know, putting it out there on my, on my Instagram and started, you know, doing it as a profession for other people. And it's been very, very successful so far. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So do you want to describe just briefly like what it is that you actually practice for people so the listeners can know? So you know, I'm, I've also, um, so I've also been a, a neuromuscular therapist. Um, you know, went, I went to massage school in 2014 and I did that. Um, so I combine between my, my athleticism and astrology and understanding energy and my, my empathic intuitive nature, I've learned to sort of combine all of that together. And so when I'm talking to someone or looking at their chart or working with someone in person, I have these different navigation tools, if you will, to identify the energy and help people to see what's going on or even like extract the energy from their body. Wow. And ayahuasca really taught me how to understand my own energy patterns and how to see the energy in other people and how to feel it. Uh, but it's interesting because the process of, of, of learning that was a process of me learning my own emotional boundaries. Like I used to feel like I deserved to take on people's crap, right? Because I didn't, I didn't believe that I was worthy. I had a lot of self-confidence, self-worth issues. And when I started to really learn that and see that, I learned how to be like more of a catalyst of, of, of love and compassion and just try to work with people. Now, so when I say like I'm working with someone coaching, right? I'll just have a conversation with them for about 20 minutes and let them talk. And through them talking, I will observe their posture, I'll observe their eye movement, their, and just their overall energy when they're talking to me, the words and how they're using their words. And that's, I just sort of pick up these behavior patterns from their mannerisms and the words and the energy from how they're saying their words. And then I will come back and I will go back over what I saw. It's either clicks or it triggers. And if it triggers, then we go d dive into that trigger and then see how to navigate that trigger. And then we identify a foundational starting point and we go as slow or as quickly as we need to. But ultimately, the, the goal is, is to identify and work through these triggers um, one at a time, overcome them, and then establish new homework and behavior patterns so that we can, you know, stop self-sabotaging. Also, with astrology, I simply, I look at a chart, I just start channeling. I just start channeling energy. And really, like, like, like I could be looking at your chart 
And I could just, I'll tell you stuff about yourself. Like, oh my God, I knew that I felt that, but I didn't know how to put it into words. Mm. You know what I mean? It helps to really get like the, the little nuances there of what's mm. going on. Once we identify that, then I help to um, identify a navigational process to, to work through. So especially going through a spiritual awakening right now, it's so, so important because when you're going through this, the emotions, the experiences are all new and overwhelming. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. So yeah. when you're able to take all this weird, crazy shit that you're feeling and put it into categories and understand, okay, when I go here and I feel like this or, or when I just, I can't get up and get around, this is why it's happening. And this is what I need to do in order to get to where I want to be. And a big part of that is just letting go of trying to figure it out because you can't figure out the external world of where you're going. You can only figure out what you're feeling. It's about shifting your consciousness and your focus to the inside as opposed to the outside. Yeah, I've been feeling all over the place. I don't know if you picked up on that energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> like I go from feeling like I'm on the right path and you're saving the world, you know, one person at a time, one one episode at a time. Uh -huh. And then I'm like, give up. No one's listening. No one cares what you have to say. Go back to sleep. <laughs> right. It's and like a... You. And everybody goes through that, you know, like even like me, like, you know, I'll have these periods of time where things are rolling, things are going great and everything's flying. And then all of a sudden it just brrr, stops. Yep. Yeah. I'm like, Oh fuck. What do I do now? Where do I go? But I've gotten to the point where like, okay, well this is going to give me an opportunity to work on these other things that I've been neglecting. Okay. Right? Or learn more about the process of how to get this information out there more efficiently or how okay. to build a, a better platform or system how to make it work better. So you have to trust that it's coming along. And as long as you're doing what you love and, and, and you have a passion for it, it's going to pan out. But it's, and then because it's when you have that vibration of that self doubt, that's actually what stops the process from moving so smoothly. But mm -hmm. every time we elevate, there's, there's always that process, right? And it yeah. really comes down to, do you feel that you're worthy? of being bigger, of being more well-known? Are you able to handle criticism more? Because the bigger you get, the more people are going to talk shit, the more haters and trolls you're going to have, that that's just the way it goes, right? Mm -hmm. And can you handle all that criticism? Can you handle all the people that aren't? Because for every two people that are talking shit, there's going to be 200 to 2,000 to 20,000 people that are going to benefit from what you're saying. Yeah. Right? I think that because I'm not there or because I'm not, at the place where I think I want to be. Right. It's a sign that I'm not ready. And you, and you know what the funny thing is? Whenever you do get to that place where you think you want to be, you're going to be want to want to be the next place. I know. It's the coward know. on the stick, brother. I know. That's how it works. I know. And it, life is always like that. It's like, exactly. dude, I should know that by now. Like, well, it's, but you're always new levels, man. This is like a video game, bro. Like mm -hmm. you, you, every time you graduate that level and you're like, okay, finally I'm getting some traction. Yeah. Like, oh, now you got these new obstacles you got to come up. And that's mostly in your mind. I've also felt like really, I feel in flux uh, and it's been disconcerting. And I, I connect really, really well with people like, like you and other people on social media. But that's still just social media. You know, I don't have the in the flesh people in my life here, in, you know, in New York, where it's like, I have the, this, these vibrations that I can, you know, feed into and get back from. So, and I've been trying to like be a, a little bit healthier with my social media consumption. So it's just this constant, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. And, flow and tug and pull and back and forth. Yeah. But, you know, there are, there are ways that you can, you know, do that. If that's what you want to expand on, then, you know, create a meetup group or like go to, you know, go to, like look on Facebook for different, you know, groups that are meeting up or whatever. Like you just have to get out there, man. But but honestly, right now is a great time to be doing online stuff because let's face it, with everything going on, the, <laughs> oh, online, <Lord>. I, <laughs> the online approach is where things are going right now. Everything's wrong. I work remotely. So can we talk about this whole coronavirus thing? Like, yeah, sure. All right. So you, you were talking earlier about how there's this major revolution that has to happen. That was in your energy report. Yeah. for March. And that's super interesting. So I'm going to link that in the show notes so that pe people All right. can see that. But you, you were just talking about the fear mongering. So what is your stance on this whole thing? Because it's getting more insane by the day. 
So I, I believe that it, it, this has been a long time coming. There are multiple different levels to this, but you know, you see from, from the vaccination movement to the 5G movement, to the government and pharmaceutical industries that are all just in everybody's pocket running the show, whether it was a, a bioweapon made or not, this is eventually going to happen. Um, I mean, you, you look back like every couple of years, something like this happens. But this one is, is, is more remnant of like the Spanish flu back in, back in the early 1900s. And 2020 is, is a year of dramatic, dramatic change. Uh, there's this agenda called ID2020, which is they're creating a whole new adult vaccination protocol. And right now they're, they're rushing to get this, this, va- this vaccine made for the coronavirus. Now, mind you, more people die from the flu every year than, than have died from this thing, but they're pumping it out to make it look so bad. And everybody's wearing masks. These masks don't work. Why is all the toilet paper and water sold out in all the- I don't rooms? know. What Why is the extra toilet paper going to do to protect you from this? Nothing. I don't it even get the link. No sense, right? Yeah. So, but people w- look on the news. It's sort of like a prescription medication commercial. You know, like they show all these happy people dancing around and they say, oh, the, the, this may cause paralysis, you know, you shitting yourself in death, but let's have some fun and fix this one issue, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. people look on the news and see these people wearing masks. So everybody goes out and buys all the masks. It's not doing anything. There's so many things that are just ridiculous with this, but they're using this to say, okay, now we're going to create a vaccine for this coronavirus really fast. So in order for you to be okay to be out in public areas, you need to get this vaccine. Soon it's going to be, now you need to get the full adult vaccination protocol. Now, whether you believe in vaccines or not, okay, there's science out there. In fact, um, the CDC just lost a case in court that, that, sh- that proves that they have no evidence suggesting that vaccines do not cause autism, okay? So all the, uh, the aluminum and the mercury and the thermosol and the formaldehyde, all these neurotoxins are being pumped in our bodies. Why do you think obesity and, 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 and autism and, 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 and auto, autoimmune diseases are at an all-time high right now, right? It keeps the sick care system sick because sick people make money. We're the sickest nation in the world. So they're trying to get everybody on board with this full vaccination. And they're trying to control and mandate everything against our constitutional rights. Right. Mm. And then on top of that, there's speculation that they're going to create some kind of identification chip in with the vaccination. So everybody, they just have to scan some kind of barcode and then they're going to be able to identify, you're not going to be able to get on a plane or get your license renewed in a few years with all this going on. And this is remnant of the Pluto-Saturn conjunction, all right? Saturn represents like government institutions, corporations, like large entities. And with it going through Capricorn, Capricorn rules all that stuff as well. Now, Pluto is, is the planet of death and rebirth. So this is literally taking all this stuff from the underground, from the outside looking in and saying, okay, something needs to change. So they're trying to maintain this control of, in this industrialized sort of um, time frame, and humanity's consciousness saying, "No, we're evolving." So we don't believe you because you're still lying to us. So stop fucking lying. But they refuse to acknowledge or admit any of this stuff. So it happens slowly but surely. And as these, as they start to keep pressurizing this control and taking away our rights. More and more people are rising up and are going to revolt. And you see that happening now everywhere, right? But right now, everybody's too afraid to do anything because now all of a sudden, everybody thinks that they're going to get the coronavirus. So this is a fear tactic to keep people at bay while they set the stage to try to increase the control mechanics in this world. Now, the coronavirus could break off and multiply into other unknown, you know, bacterial or viral infections that we don't even know about. So it's super, super important to stay as healthy as possible. Okay. And there are natural means. That's why um, functional medicine is gaining so much notoriety and alternative medical protocols are, are becoming so common because people are going to get on these pills and get these shots and go to see doctors. And all they want to do is, is either cut you open or give you a pill to suppress an issue. And it's more and more evidence is coming out showing that this is not helping. It's just making things worse. And as more people wake up and start to fight these processes, there's more and more resistance until boom, it's just gonna blow up. Democrats are trying to take away gun rights. I heard the other day that uh, the government is suppressing the Posse Comitatus Act. 
which in the military, that, that is basically the act that says that the US military cannot operate on its own grounds, right? So they're suspending that so that just in case martial law can be implemented in the United States. Mm. They are putting all these things in place so that when there isn't, because they know there's going to be an, up, an uprising, they want to take our rights away so that we can't do anything about it. We just have to fall in line. And, but I can tell you right now, it's not going to happen. What do you see happening? I see a civil war happening. I'd say probably by 2023, 2024, when Pluto moves into Aquarius, that's the time when it's really going to pop off. From oh now till then, God. there's a really pressurizing movement. So get prepared, people. How should we prepare? By taking care of your physical health and your emotional health, staying away, like not eating junk food, learning yourself, reading into, you know, how to take care of your physical and emotional well-being, getting rid of toxic people in your life, doing what you love to do the best you can, creating communities of people that have your back that, you know, you can trust. You know, I mean, it's going to be different for everybody, but protect yourself at the very core of it. Taking care of your physical health, I think, is going to be the most important because if you don't have your physical health, you're not going to be able to do anything else. You're, you're, you're going to be like a, a, a victim to the system. In order to figure out exactly what your body needs to, to, to function the best, you know, our, our body is made of bacteria, right? Our mitochondria is, is bacteria. Get a, get a Viome test, V-I-O-M-E. That is, a, is an at-home stool test you send in, and they, they measure your, your bacteria in there, and they identify what gut bacteria is in your gut and what foods resonate with it and what food you need to avoid, okay? That's step number one. Step number two is get on Euphoria, which is a DNA-based supplement, okay? When you're able to, um, to customize your nutrition to your DNA, It'll lengthen the telomeres in your DNA. It'll help to optimize the function of your cellular activity in your body. And that can help with whatever imbalances you might have going on from digestion to hair loss to vision, you name it. Okay. And then just discipline yourself, you know, like exercise regularly, you know, eat good quality foods, get good sleep, get rid of toxic people in your life and love yourself. I mean, with all this fear mongering, it's implanting. Like we're, we're all, we're, we're all connected at, at the unconscious mm -hmm. level. And it's, it's hard not to get consumed by all this information. It's everywhere you look. And they do that on purpose to make everybody terrified. And with all these things shutting down and like Tom Hanks just got it or something like that, like it's in, it's infiltrating everywhere. Of course you can't really avoid seeing it, but like, look at it in an objective sense of just to see what's going on and stay on top of the news, but don't allow it to keep you shut down because that's what that fear mongering does. The fear mongering is 50% of the problem, right? Mm -hmm. So, so take care of yourself, protect yourself, but don't allow this to shut you down. Keep shift the focus onto you to loving yourself and then moving forward one step at a time and keeping a good circle of people and energy around you. You're able to do that. You're going to be fine going through this process. Say somebody wants to like become woke or <laughs> is new to it. Uh -huh. Is it something that people can try to instigate in themselves? Like, I mean, some people talk about the burning bush experience where they just like have this come to moment. Other people, it's more, it's more incremental. I think for me, it's been more incremental. And now I'm yeah. still, now I'm like, awkward puberty stage of it so like <laughs> is there something that you could suggest to people in terms of stepping into their spirituality or their power you said that i love that what you said stepping into your power well you know this isn't something that you consciously choose to do this is something that is is, is given to you in divine timing right that's why i like like you said so it happens different for everybody right for me, my first massive awakening was when I was in Iraq during my Saturn return. And there are, there are times like in our lives where like there are different aspects that we have a much more likely to have these massive experiences, but trying to have some kind of conscious control is actually the antithesis of the process because that's saying that you want to try to control it. And the whole idea of this process is to let go of control. In a nutshell, what a, an awakening process is, is unlearning all the shit that we've learned to keep us held down. So it's a process of learning trust and faith and letting go and allowing yourself to have that trust bring you into your future. 
So trust requires release of control, not activating it. You got to explore and get out there and find things that you love and find things that, 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 that you resonate with and then learn to trust that feeling of, of resonating with it. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's a process, man. Like there's no easy way to say it. Just it's going to happen in the time that's going to happen. But I, but I, but I will tell you this, this year, 2020, we, and we are already seeing it. We're already having it, but there's going to be many, many more pulses of spiritual awakenings around the world. Millions of people are going to uh, awaken this year. I thought that because I was stepping into this world, that's why it seemed more prevalent. But okay. you're telling me that it's actually, there's, a, there's an actual mass awakening happening. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah, wow. and the more, people, the more people that awaken, the more it spurs more awakening. Because what's happening is all this dense energy is now coming up within us all right? It's being exposed. That's a Saturn-Pluto conjunction. And as we have these more intense aspects going through the year, more and more people are going to be having that experience, like waking up like, oh, something's wrong here. Something ain't right. So the, the more people that do it, then we all feel it, okay? Because now that dense energy is being released. And as it's released, we all have to work together to clear it. So that's why when you go through experience, it's not fun, man. Like it's all of a sudden you feel like you don't know who you are anymore. Right. Yeah. You get so, imposter syndrome. Right. Exactly. But that's where like you will just be naturally drawn to conversations like we're having right now. You'll be drawn to content because you'll hear a word or a phrase and you'll, you'll intuitively be like, ah, that feels right. I want to go this way. You just feel pulled in that direction. Like, like, a, like, a, like a tractor beam is just pulling you in that direction. Right. Yeah. And the key is, is just follow that tractor beam. I mean, it's not really like you can fight it anyways. Right. Yeah. It'll and be getting lo- stronger and stronger as more people wake up. And as people wake up, I mean, look, this is sort of like the, the, like what happened in the sixties with all the hippies and shit like that. Well, they started it, but they didn't really fully follow through the process. They were sloppy about it. They were like, <laughs> they were like teenagers in the, in the awakening process. Now we're more mature adults in the awakening process, uh, collectively speaking. Right. Right. So they were all like peace, love and happiness, dude. And like, let's all like explore and have fun. But it was just about doing drugs and, and getting laid and, you know, standing up and having a voice, but not really taking action, not, not doctors and lawyers and, you know, politicians weren't like taking the proactive measures they need to in the systems that they're embedded into to change through influencing other people's belief systems. That's what's going on now. We're seeing people that are in very influential positions, influencing others, right? And so that's what's going on here now. We have much more like people that have their shit together are waking up and sharing these experiences. And the more people that, that, that it happens with, the more it's going to keep happening. And you're going to realize like, you know, that really makes sense. And this, this CNBC over here, they're just both, they're just talking shit. You can tell it's, it's like it, you go on TV over here and it's like they're teenagers slinging mud at each other. It's ridiculous. I can't watch TV anymore. It's stupid. Like, dude, okay. Let me know when you guys grow up. Right. But, but, you know, and, and, and that's where these independent sources of media and, and, and things are starting to pop up. Social media is a new platform, things like Gaia TV, all these other su- subscription based models and YouTube is huge. Now, you know, podcasting, all these things are, are getting the messages out more and more. We just got to keep with it, man. So whenever you're feeling like maybe, uh, maybe this isn't working, whatever, you never know. You're going to, the, the next person you talk to or you're drawn to, is going to have some kind of special information that's going to re reinstigate that, that fire under your ass to keep it going, man. So don't, don't ever quit. Don't ever give up because you're doing really important work for, for the collective. Thank you. And this may be the conversation that you're referring to. <laughs> hey, maybe, man. You know, I, I just have that effect on people. I was just going to ask. So for, let's say we're going to assume that all the listeners here are of the awakening process. How do you, or how have you dealt with people that I'm sure you've been naysayed and hit with haters and people that, you know, criticize you, the work that you do yeah. so for anyone on the spiritual path, how can they handle that type of criticism? You know, that kind of criticism 
it triggers the ego. What you have to do is be able to observe your own ego in that, in that reaction process and train yourself to send compassion back to it. Cause when you're in that, when you're in the higher vibration, you come to realize that these, these people are just reacting, not responding from their level of consciousness and they want to pull you down. Right? So you just can't, you can't let them pull you down. You're like, you know what? I got love for you. I wish you the best. And then you just don't, if you don't feed the energy with your energy that it has nothing to feed off of. So mm. it'll just die out. Mm. At first I used to try to shove this shit down people's throats, right? Like, no, I had this amazing, amazing awakening and you need to see this. You need to understand you need to get it. But people just pisses off. Right. Yeah. If they're not ready for it, if not in the same place you are, they're like, Whoa, ease back brother. Like, get out of here. especially me. I'm a super intense guy. So, you know, <laughs> I tend to like, be like, ah. so I've had to really, you know, take a step back and, you know, be more like a big, just fun, like puppy dog, like a, you know, just like, like playful and funny dude. But mm-hmm. you can't let people get under your skin. But you have to realize that they're trying to pull you down to their level. And you just have to, you, want to, you just have to become the bigger person in every single experience. Mm-hmm. That's really what it comes down to, man. Send love because, because if you're living from a place of love, you send love and compassion to everything that you can, but you step away from the toxicity from it. Mm. So someone's talking shit, someone's throwing out, okay, like say someone says a shitty comment on your YouTube channel. Okay, well, you politely just delete it. They keep coming at you. (laughs) Politely Um, delete it. (laughs) Yeah, like, okay, thank you. (laughs) Fuck yourself with love and have a nice day. Right? (laughs) Like, I'm just, okay, I'm not, I'm just, I'm not going to let it ruin my day. I'm not going to let it fuck with me. I'm just going to keep doing me because I know what I'm doing is important work. That's good. That's really yeah. good. So in terms of what you're doing, what is next for you? Uh, well, I'm creating an online platform and uh, I'm, I'm in the middle of writing another book about how to take physical, emotional, and spiritual care of yourself oh. between like being physically fit, emotionally fit, and spiritually fit and the interconnectivity of it all. So I'm going to go deep into nutrition, how the physical body speaks to us through our emotion like through pain or imbalances in the fascial system, what it means. Cause essentially the, the body is a subconscious mind, right? So understanding basically the language of energy and the language of what our body is telling us emotionally and what that means spiritually and, and, and how to navigate the process. Wow. How can people find you and see all your content? Cause you really do have you're you're consistent, you're insightful. It's always super personalized. How can people follow all your content? Um, right now you can go to my, to my Instagram. That's my main, the, my main platform, spiritual underscore bodybuilder. Also my YouTube, which is spiritual bodybuilder. And I'm going to be posting updates. I'm, I'm in the process of, of, uh, of getting my website all done up. Um, that should be ready in about, in about a month, but I'm going to have links and, and, and videos explaining all this stuff on my Instagram. So just go check me out there. And, um, and then I, I, on my YouTube, I also do a yeah, full moon, new moon and, and a monthly energy report. So uh, you can check that out too. Awesome. Awesome. And I hope that you would uh, want to come back in a little while man. onto the show. Yeah, absolutely. I'm always, I'm always really excited and happy to work with other, you know, awakening souls to, you know, spread this message and to, you know, just increase the awareness in the world, man. Um, and, and what I would say is, you know, if you are going through some kind of crisis in your life, or even if you're not, just love yourself and trust the process. Because the universe is guiding you into a better place. And if you're feeling like blocked, if you're feeling like you don't know where you're at, you know, get with people like, like you or myself, you know, so that we can work together to help navigate the process so that you can learn to trust and that you can allow yourself to go into the unknown because the unknown is essentially just as scary as the stuff that we don't like, right? You don't really know the difference. Sort of like, you know, when, when you have a child, right? Right. Like it's the scariest, but most loving feeling that you'll ever fear in your life. Right. Or when you meet someone and you fall in love with them, the feeling of opening up your heart is a very similar feeling to if your heart is broken because you have to break it open. Right. So think about that one for a minute. Read that again. (laughs) (laughs) Captioned. Exactly. (laughs) 